All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to connect your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons to your Windows PC and get them running with Steam. So the nice thing is Steam's got support for basically every controller type under the sun, even those weird flight sticks that you probably are thinking to yourself that's got to have a special driver. And Joy-Cons are no exception. Uh, but all you got to do to get these to work is have a computer with the most recent updated version of Steam and also the ability to connect with Bluetooth because most computers have Bluetooth these days, but some of them don't if they don't have a Wi-Fi card or if you have an older one. Sometimes people buy a pre-built, they have older ones, I don't know, but we're going to do that today. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab my left Joy-Con and I'm going to open up my, well, first you want to have the Steam settings open. So you go up to the upper left corner here and click Steam, click on Settings. You should get into a window that looks similar to this, but it'll probably be on Account, and then go down to Controller so you see this window. After that, open up your Bluetooth settings, bring that window on top of all the other stuff I just had you open, and then we're going to connect this controller to my computer with wireless because it doesn't really like behaving when I plug it into the special charging grip I got. So to pair your Joy-Con with your PC, if you look at the part that connects to your switch, there's a little round button. Go ahead and give that a press and hold until the little lights next to it start uh, dancing. From there, you're going to click on add Bluetooth or other device, click on Bluetooth. And then you should see Joy-Con in brackets L for left. Go ahead and click on that, and then you should be paired. You might also notice here that it says, hey, look, you've connected Joy-Con left. We're not done yet. We're going to go ahead and grab the other controller as well. Press that same little round button until the lights dance on the back. If this one actually wants to behave itself, I should say. All right, so I'll grab the other controller and I will go ahead and I will hit that little button on the back as well so that the lights start to dance and I will pair it as well. There we go. It should show up. And then once both of them are connected to the computer, it'll look like it disconnected and it'll display Nintendo Switch Joy-Con left and right, and it automatically pairs them together as a single controller, whereas in the past, in past years, they used to be separate until you told it to make it function as singular, which is down here. This setting is on by default. Combine Joy-Con in pairs. So basically what your settings are at the top is, do you want the game to, do you want these to vibrate when you're playing the game? Yes, no. Do you want to use the Nintendo button layout, which switches around the different visual A and B, X and Y buttons, just like they're displayed on the Nintendo controller? I recommend having that on. It doesn't always change them visually on the screen for you because that depends on the game's support for these Joy-Cons, but when it does and when it can, it will do so. Here under testing device inputs, you can click on this to make sure that your controllers are working. If you've got like mad stick drift, it'll sort of display that here. And if that happens, you can adjust the calibration of the dead zones inside of the controller layout options, which is right here under calibration and advanced settings. Other buttons and toggles that you might want to pay attention to are if you want these to function as separate controllers because you've got like one of the handful of games that run on PC where you can use these separately and still play the full game, you can toggle this button down here and it'll treat these both as separate controllers, prioritizing the left one it appears, but I can also just tell it to pair them up again and then it'll treat them as one singular controller again. Although I think my right Joy-Con is currently low on battery, so it's not going to display it as left and right again, but if you have them both hooked up properly to your computer, it'll display them as L and R at the top there like you saw before. You just got to make sure that it has combined Joy-Con pairs toggled on 
in order for them to function as a singular controller. Next up, you've got the option to guide button focuses Steam. So if you're using the correct options for like menu buttons and stuff and you're not currently in a game, it'll focus back on the Steam like client to do stuff. You can turn that on and off if you want. I don't really use that. Whenever I'm not currently in a game, I'm not really touching my controller. Next up, you've got enable Steam inputs for Xbox controllers. Probably not as important because this is a Joy-Con tutorial, but if you've got an con Xbox controller and you want it to control certain things on Steam, you can probably turn that on. I just leave that off so it only does stuff while I'm in-game. You can also ignore this pull-down menu for PlayStation controller support because this is for Joy-Cons. Uh, but mostly what you want is combined Joy-Con pairs, which is in two locations for some reason. Which is weird. That wasn't doing that before. But make sure these are both toggled on if you have two options to combine Joy-Cons into a single controller so that it behaves as one controller. Um, you can enable Steam input for generic controllers if you have one. That's down here. Those would be like the weird wannabe PlayStation and Xbox controllers from companies like Logitech. You can set it so that your controllers turn off if you exit big picture mode. If you find yourself using big picture mode a lot to play games and you don't want your controllers to do the stuff with the things after you close it, you can toggle this on. Down here, you've got idle gamepad shutdown time. So if you're not using your controller, do you want them to turn off so that they save on electricity? Generally, if you're playing with them wirelessly, that's a good idea. You can set them to be like after 5, 10, 15 minutes of, in, of no use, you can just let them go to sleep. I usually have my controllers plugged in, so I just set that to never. And then down here, if you use an Xbox controller and you want to use the extended feature support driver, you can, un, you can install that down here. Just note that it does require you to restart your computer. Um, it's kind of nice if you've got like a fancier Xbox controller. Otherwise, don't worry about it. It doesn't really change any of the rest of these settings for you. And then down here, these are just some settings that control how your controller behaves on the desktop layout and using the guide button cords. Neither of these are probably all that important to a lot of people. Usually when you're not in a game, a lot of people are just back on mouse and keyboard when they're playing around with their settings. But if you want to adjust that, you can click on edit here to mess around with it, or you can click on this to mess around with the only setting of resetting the layout for this option. And that for the most part is it. Once you've got your controllers plugged in and they're actually behaving themselves, which righty wasn't for some reason. Let's see if we can get it to behave itself now again. Yeah, it's paired right here. Let's remove this device and pair it again now that it's got more charge. I don't know why this wasn't charging, but sometimes Joy-Cons have opinions, and that's why we're in this tutorial, isn't it? Um, As sort of like a disclaimer on the front of this, there's oftentimes a discrepancy and a bit of lag between one Joy-Con and the other when you're using it. I don't have a fix for that if that comes up and happens to you. Just do what you can with what you got. But yeah, here you go. Once it's paired again and you've got it set to combine them into one controller by saying combine Joy-Con pairs, at the top it'll say... Nintendo Switch Joy-Con left slash right, and you should be good to go. I also have, for those who are interested, a discount code for NordVPN in the video description below. If you click on that, it gives you a discount on the service, and it also gives me a kickback to help support the channel. And if you're not familiar with NordVPN, the whole notion of a VPN is it allows you to log in to a server somewhere else in the world, that allows you to function as if you're using the internet from that location. It's great for disguising your internet traffic so people can't snoop on what you are doing. It helps to stay safe and secure for doing things like mobile banking on the go. 
And it's also nice for things like watching videos that are region locked if you've got things like Hulu. It's also got a few other handy details that are great for things like your phone. Like if you log into NordVPN on your phone, it's got a built-in ad blocker so that you don't get nasty ads spammed throughout all the different apps that you use. And in general, it's got some great security features that help keep you protected while you're online. So I totally recommend it. And uh, if you're interested, the link's in the video description below. And I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And bye, everybody. And have a good one.